Hello, welcome to the downside. Uh, wow. A very unique episode, different episode. My co-host Russell Daniels is currently in. Uh, uh, well, I hate to spoil. We're recording this early, but he's in New Orleans for Mardi Gras, and he's living it up. So if he if he lives, he'll be back uh, next week. But today, first of all, I'm very lucky. Uh, we had a, a great fill-in co-host. You know him from our episode about cum towels, Ian Fidance. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me, John Marco. Ian, I literally saw you, what, like uh, 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 12 hours ago? 12 hours ago <laughs> yeah. uh, at the For Comedy the Cellar. Worst crowds. It was a tough one. It was a tough yeah, one. They were brutal. There's tough ones there, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it was there. There, I was so tired. I had a gig in Queens earlier, and then I drove to the cellar. The show started late. Everything was running behind. I got there what I thought would be on time, and I'm just sitting and waiting. And I'm just so tired, exhausted. You know, I had, like, gigs all weekend. I just wanted to, like, go home. And at the end of the show, some guy was kind of passing out, and I commented on it. And he goes, I'm not drunk because your jokes are making me fall asleep. Fine. And I had... No comeback. I was so tired. I wow. did not feel like engaging. And I go, come on, man. It's, it's the other day. Man. Come I'm on, exhausted. man. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the searing comedy. Oh, yeah. Comedian settles with yeah, that Yeah, that, that'll be my viral video. <laughs> um, no, it was a relief. You know, David Tell went up after, after me, and I was nervous yes. because it was a... Uh, you always assume when you're, bo I assume when I'm bombing on stage, the audience, no one will be like, the, this audience sucks. They'll just be like, oh, he sucks. Oh, yeah. But everyone knows um, it, that it's the crowd. Yeah. You know. The, the, well, you, you got to see like a couple comics to go, yes. oh, it's the crowd. Yes. Because if somebody's like crushing before you and crushing after you and you're awful and you're like, man, that crowd. It's like, no, man, you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh but then I stayed to watch Dave. It was very nice. I, I don't know Dave Attell very well, but he mm -hmm. recently, he was he was going on a show. Was on, he came up to me and said, hey, do you mind if I do 10 minutes on the show before you? Yeah. And I, I was, it was, it was I think the first so person anyone's ever asked me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I could say no, but of course. it was very nice of him to do that. That was very, yeah. very And he's sweet. one of the most prolific, greatest comics of all time. And he's so humble. And then, you know, some other comics come in and they're like, I'm going to do 45 minutes of the same thing I've been doing for a week. And tell the person that I'm going to bump them. I'm not yeah, even yeah, going to yeah. make eye yeah. contact. I, with I won't them. even apologize. It's uh, wild. Um, well, we're here. I'm very excited for this episode, I'm, I'm, and I'm glad that you're here for this. I'm here with, with my friend, uh, old friend from way back. Weren't excited enough to get dressed up for me that way. Sure, <laughs> sure. Uh, well, you know, you're, you're kind of, you're a model slash actor. <laughs> Uh, this is my old friend. Uh, uh, we were in an acting company together way back. Uh, with Ten years ago. Ten years, ten years ago, ago. My God. With uh, with a teacher who who was who was uh, a genius mm. and and abusive and uh, and recently passed away and uh, but I also want to talk about you. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. From uh, from uh, the Australian uh, uh, soap opera Waterloo. He did no research in preparation so for my coming. Wow. He's I told you he was so on much. the HBO show Industry. I was incorrect. I hope yes. that doesn't change you it's being not, here. It's not well, even hard to like IMDb people now. You John are Michael. on the Apple show. Uh, blind horses, slow horses, slow horses. Wow! Welcome, man. Chris Chung. This you is are three for three on fuck ups right now. <laughs> the downside. <laughs> I forgot to put in the music in the new box. Oh yes. Oh god, that's gonna be a post post. <laughs> that's oh, oh great. no, it's not even getting fixed in post. Oh right, okay. That's, yeah, they no, love that's that the about the podcast, here, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? Listen, that's part of the authenticity. Yeah. That's what makes um, it real. Yeah, I feel you know, like, yeah. you're watching a meltdown in real time. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the show's about. Now. <laughs> Everybody wants to see the rough edges. Yeah, uh, Pete. Just so people know, you—it's not that you have a speech impediment. You have an accent. Yeah. And where you where are you from? I grew up in Australia. In Australia, in yeah. in, in uh, Sydney, Melbourne. Yes, in Melbourne. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> sake, Jim. He's just We're naming everything. For Ten years. So so, uh, uh, what are you doing? And you're just visiting America right now. Yeah, I'm just visiting America. I came to see you. Came to do your podcast. I'm still waiting for my per diem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the per diem. Uh, it was that it hey. was that cup of water you got yeah, earlier. You're lucky you're getting a chair, pal. <laughs> These are new. <laughs> did, did you notice? The yeah, they're nice. Chairs? They're nice. And I gave you the cup with my face on it just to be a dick. You didn't even fucking wash it. 
I did wash it. It has a lot of coffee in it. Listen. Yeah, I, I went to the bathroom and I was like, did someone leave a tinkle? And I was like, oh, oh that's just God. the bowl. Someone died what in this. What the fuck, guys? <laughs> <laughs> this is too behind yeah. the scenes. Um, <laughs> someone died in this fight, you know. Oh, yeah. It hasn't been, hasn't been cleaned since. Mm-mm. So, so Still yeah. Still blood on the floor. I guess uh, let's, well, right now you're living in London, yes? I live in London, yeah. Okay, so I guess right off the bat, what's London's responsibility to Ukraine during this conflict oh god just to not leave them behind oh this has gotten really heavy yeah, yeah, yeah. all of a sudden like so let's, let's i came here for a good time dude, sure, I, sure. I, have a, I have a buddy who's a ukrainian jew whose family fled the ukraine in the early 90s and when all this hit i treated him like uh, a lot of people did their black friends during black lives matter like, how, how are you i called him i was like hey i hear you i see you how are you sure i'm sure <laughs> boris like, really yeah, loves that yeah, yeah. Boris yeah, yeah. Hyken. Oh, God. Yeah. No, but Shout I mean, out to Boris. It's weird because, like, you know, I have a lot of friends that are Russian mm-hmm. in, in the UK and who, who don't support what's going on of course. over there. But they can't access any of their money and they can't do shit, you know? Ooh. So that's, you know. That's, that's what's so fucked up about this is that regular citizens are being yeah. punished for the actions of their government. And everyone's like, yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, I just wanted to buy some bread and I have no affiliation with Putin, but. Yeah, I can't do that now. <laughs> so, yeah, are there, maybe they do. How, how many Russians good. are in London? Like yeah. a lot. How many Russians are in L- London? Is like basically half owned by Russians. <laughs> oh, sure, half. Owned. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I so mean, are a lot of the buildings in New York City. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, yeah. I don't think I. They might all be up for grabs soon. Like. I know. Fingers crossed. I guess Boris is my Boris is my only Ukrainian friend, and he's famous. He was circumcised at seven, six. Wow. He was circumcised later in life when it really counts. Yes. That means you really want to to be part of the the faith. Yeah, I don't know if he was begging. <laughs> His sure, family at seven. <laughs> but like with that young, I think you'd have to, you'd have to hold him down. Yeah, we'll sed- you'd have, we'll sedate, sedate him, him. Yeah, sedate or like you. a local anesthetic. Yeah, which I also think that's is you that be awake for molesting. <laughs> <laughs> Are you circumcised? Yeah. Are you? Oh yeah. Are you? No. Whoa. Whoa. What is it like in Australia? What's the numbers for circumcised? Uncircumcised? Yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> like yeah, for both. I, I One or the other I half. I don't like care. A really in-depth statistical. Yeah, search. he knew it down to like. Yeah, uh, but like give or take ten. When a woman like, wow. sees your penis, does she go like, oh, or does she go? Oh, mm, it's a mm. bit of a fifty-fifty response. I mean, there's only been one woman seeing my penis recently, my wife. So, and she's always. Mm. Well, yeah, no. I mean, wink, it's, not, it's like a graduation downwards <laughs> towards sure. that response. But. Here in America, I don't know what it's going to be like for this next generation, but most guys were circumcised from yeah. from my generation. Yeah, right. well, I mean, the, the country is founded on, you know... Circumcision? Yeah. Right. I, I mean, that's it. why we left Britain. <laughs> that's Wasn't that part of why Christianity... Freedom. Isn't that why Christianity kind of took a hold? Because they were like, hey, you could be Jewish or become Christian. You don't have to cut your dick. Yeah. And, and that's why that's why became the major religion. Christians have gone around the world because they're obsessed with other people's penises. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's one of the many reasons why I'm Catholic. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> so before we dive into uh, this acting thing, I do want to, Ian, you you act. Uh, yes. I saw a clip. We were both on the show, The Last OG. Yes. You had a much bigger part than me. Thank you. I uh, <laughs> I walked a dog. Uh-huh. And I walked this dog. I just had to like walk. I said one line on a phone past Tracy Morgan. And then uh, I was supposed to leave the frame. I was supposed to quickly scoop up the dog. Mm-hmm. And what I was supposed to do is like kind of pull on the leash a little bit and then reach under and scoop it up really fast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this one time we're doing the take. And it, the, the, the leash is attached. It's a small dog. It's attached to the dog's body. Mm-hmm. But I scooped it up. You had to do it fast. Yeah. And the dog kind of jumped out of my hand. And so for a second, it looked like I was hanging the dog by Amazing. the leash and I saw I mean this dog was not down to play. Right. Yeah. This dog was not very well trained. I've done a couple scenes with animals always a disaster. Mm-hmm. But I saw the whole group of people go <gasps> Oh wow. And I thought I was going to lose. Have you Did they all this? hate you? I I Were they mad at you? I, not we had to move fast. Mm. But I don't think I don't think any luckily Tracy Morgan was not on set yet. Ah. He was. It was one of those. He had like a look. My scene there. was with Tracy. I know, and your was scene wild. was great. You were uh, inebriated in your scene. I played a drunk guy. I had one line. It was yeah, but oh, I thought maybe your part wasn't bigger than mine. Do you have no, to, do you have to go in like audition for like one line? Like yeah, as a drunk. Well, person? I I yeah. improvise on set. 
They said action. I improvised a line, and it broke the crew, broke Tracy, and they were like, do that again. What'd you say? And I, uh, I... I'm supposed to go, he's like, that girl over there wants to dance with you. And I go, yeah. And he goes, go get her. And I'm supposed to go over and, and dance. And he goes, that girl over there. I go, yeah. And he points at her. And it was Sashir Zamata. And I go, Michelle Obama. And it like <laughs> broke the crew. And they <laughs> loved it. And they let me improvise all my lines. And they added me to two more scenes. Oh, yes. my God. Yeah, it was great. That's and Tracy great. grabbed me and was like, this is what it's about. You got to swing for the fences. My boy is going to be famous. And then at the rap party, I was like, Tracy, that was amazing. And he goes, it was, and then just walked away and never acknowledged me. <laughs> I've seen a, I've seen a lot of Tracy Morgan impressions, but not everyone that was Jewish. A Jewish. Oh wow. <laughs> well, another Dude. one of my lines was, he's like, "Look at that girl over there, go get her," and I go, "I hope she's Jewish." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. It was awesome. They they were like, "Okay, we're gonna keep rolling. Just keep saying lines." That's I a just swing. Kept... That that's a swing. That, oh, Michelle yeah. Obama. That's you know that's a that's like mean, some Listen. The worst they could do is say, stick to the line. And then I'd nail the line, and then I'm done. I go home. I figured, why the hell not? And, it, dude, it was right before COVID. I nailed that. I nailed an Uber Eats commercial. I got in a pilot, just killing it. And then everything shut down, and I haven't gotten anything since. Because well, I'm so, so bad uh -huh. at uh, self-tapes. Sure. They're they, so tough. They're bane, bane of these. But they're so tough. Were you an actor before? Have you taken acting classes, or are you just... I took one acting class and I loved it. And I've been trying to take another acting class. I'd really love to do Meisner. I really want to be an actor. I love acting. Good Meisner. We're going to talk Meisner. I today. enjoy it. I act in people's sketches all, all the time. But, yeah. you know, like, I'll do, I don't know what it is. The self tape, I just am devoid of. It's very, any, it's I'm very good challenging. At booking the room. I've booked the room of like, I don't get a gig. The director likes me. I get something else. I'm like, cool. And then when it comes time for me in my basement and the oh camera's God. on, I That's am hard. We've an lost the motionless room. robot. We've lost the room as an initial. I feel yeah. like I, I, it's really sad. I think it's very sad. I don't know what it's like right now in London, but we're just doing self-tapes for Do you think we'll ever go back? No. Well, I think like once you start going like getting closer to the job yeah like, but for initials you used to go in and you don't yeah. get that anymore no. and like sometimes that casting director giving you just one little note can make the whole difference yeah when i i did these general lecture commercials i was second callback and all the cast director he she went behind the like team because she wasn't supposed to give notes at this point mm -hmm. she just went take it down a notch oh and that's yeah. the reason i got it yeah and maybe that should always be the note i give myself i mean when i'm <laughs> acting is to take it down a notch. that's that's my slate Hi, my name's Ian Fidance. I'm based in Brooklyn, and I'm reading for the role of that's a bit much <laughs> because every time it's too much. I don't know. I always think that like I always try. Oh, make it smaller, make it smaller, just to the point uh, where you're doing fucking nothing. Here's the the worst. The worst. I had an audition. It was for like a Law and Order type show, and she said after the second try, she said, "Okay, make it like it's in the real world," and I. It like broke my soul. Mm. It broke to like, you so I was like, oh, you, you I didn't know. Yeah, oh, I didn't think it was in the Looney Tune world. That <laughs> wasn't what I was trying yeah. to do. Yeah. So we we met at this acting company. Uh, this should was give it a synonym or a, a, a pseudonym. Should we come up with a pseudonym? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. The Citadel. She's, okay. she's <laughs> yeah. She's, we went to the Citadel. I'll say right right out the gate. Uh, uh, we can just say her. Fuck. She's no, dead no, now. she's dead. I know, I know. <laughs> Wait, was this in New York City? Uh, it started in New York City, but so what happened? I took an acting class uh, with this woman, Wendy Ward, and, and it that's was the woman that died. That's the woman who passed okay. away. All right, and it was it was very sudden. She, she got Wendy Williams. <laughs> Wendy, <laughs> that's a good one. No one will know. Yeah, she got. Uh, it was very sudden. She she got diagnosed with stage four pancreas. Yeah. Pancreatic cancer. Yeah. Oh God! And it was it was uh, that it was is swift. we had not brutal. spoken for a very long time. Be Stage four pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. That is so sad. <laughs> oh my God! Oh God! <laughs> I forgot, Ian, Ian, Ian is a, a literal and figurative button pusher. Woo! Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> I took I took a summer program with Wendy Ward. 
uh, uh, and she was an incredible teacher. She was an incredible acting teacher. When you go, at least my view of a college programs, at least in America, they have, because there's so many BFA programs, they've kind of boiled it down to a very text-based approach that is kind of like easy to teach, mm. a little bit too stripped of like emotions and feelings, and it's because they need a program, A, that won't get them sued, because mm. I'm sure a lot of colleges have to fear that, and B, it's like anyone can teach it, even if you're not talented. So this was like Isn't a teacher- that teaching in general? <laughs> sure. sure. I used to be a teacher, so <laughs> What did you I teach? What it's like. uh, I taught, I was a uh, full-time sub, and then I taught uh, after-school test prep. Like SATs? Yeah. Are you are you like a, a what you get in your SATs? Are you like a really smart no. person? <laughs> no, I'm very smart, but I, I'm a bad test taker. So I could really like empathize with the students. So I feel like that really helped me to help them take the test better. Yeah. You know. And then you like gave it all up to do comedy? Yeah. It was I, I was it wasn't SAT, sorry, it was Regents teaching uh public school students how to take the Regents exams. That's good. Um, well, it's terrible because it gets in the way of like true learning. Oh, of so course. I was kind of like the enemy, but I needed to make a living. So yeah, you, you, but you were yeah. helping. You were like working on the inside. Well, yeah. Half the time, I I would just trash the lesson and teach them like manners or like why it's bad to like <laughs> yell and are make fun of tests. the Chinese janitor. <laughs> like I had to give them like talks about like. Why it's not okay to say, you know, F-A-G and everything. I, I love it. I love a teacher just being like, okay, before we get to algebra, I heard what you were saying oh, about yeah. the janitor. That's, it's yeah. wild. It's like a finishing school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you turn, I like an Ian Finance finishing school. <laughs> What's that movie with Michelle, Michelle Pfeiffer? What's that film? Dangerous uh, Minds. There we go. Yeah. Um, it was Dangerous Minds. Mm -hmm. So this teacher, I kind of like fell in love. I just fell in love and she, she ha uh, proposed, she was doing an acting company. I was going to graduate college um, with no no real prospects. You do a showcase. You maybe mm -hmm. get some calls with, looking back, not very prominent people, scam artists. And um, <laughs> I, I joined this acting company with my girlfriend at the time, mm -hmm. and we were both very deep in acting. And most of her, the company came from Australia. Oh, wow. And they were moving to Philly, and we were going to be in, like, what I saw as, like, the famous... What they used to do back in the day were the actings. They were cults. They were schools. They were like communities. You you breathed it. You lived it. It was a rep company. It was a rep company, yeah. which which I don't know. It's not as as much of that in America, or that that system feels like it's a bit of the past, like a touring yeah. company of of people. It's still there. Yeah, we have it in the UK. Still. Yeah, I mean it's starting to come back, but it's meant designed for you to stretch and and to really go into different versions of yourself through acting. And every morning we'd we do class, intensive class. You got there late, she'd fucking yell at you, and we'll get into the, the yelling. But she was she was like she expected the most. And then and then at night you'd rehearse a show and you we were attacking stuff and trying to sell tickets disastrously. Um, we 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 did a show once uh, where my dad came. We did it in a church. That's where we you know free rent or whatever. And my dad came to this show, like a sixteen person show about the sinking of a boat. A lot of poetry, music, which wasn't movement. Titanic. Uh -huh. And my dad was the only person in the audience for this Aww. show. So my father's sitting there as like 16 Australians and me, like <laughs> slow motion pretend to drown. Oh, God. <laughs> and like, no. And uh, uh, truly, truly uh, abysmal audience attendance. But that's where we met. And it was this very like, it was just one of those weird things you can only really have in your youth unless you join a cult later as an yeah, adult where yeah. you're all there. You guys were in a different fucking country. You're there for this one singular mission, and it's to be a great actor and create great art. Yeah. It was really like, looking back on it, towards the end of it, I'd never wanted to be out of something so badly. We had these postcards with, with the dates of the shows on it, and I was crossing down each one. I'd, I hadn't wanted to for Christmas to come any sooner than that. And it followed wow. all the trajectory. Whenever I see a cult documentary, we didn't reach the point of like fucking... Uh -huh. No one was fucking. Or drinking the Kool-Aid. Or drinking yeah. the Kool-Aid. lost out on the best part of but, the cult. But we did the full thing of like, we're enjoying it, oh, we're no. enjoying it. You see some of the cracks. Right. Partly no one coming to the shows was part of the cracks. And the goal right. was we were going to be in Philly, do these shows, and then go to Australia together and do shows there. But by the time we got towards that date, 
Uh, Wendy had fired uh, someone from the company. People were rebelling. Never a good sign. There was a there was a, there left. was a friend from Germany. Uh, uh, she needed you know Wendy to write kind of comments about her being a good American, whatever visa thing she was on. And Wendy was like going to write bad things like what? bad, bad, bad things. And then the Australia trip got canceled. I didn't get my ticket refunded. I lost twenty four hundred dollars. Yeah. So. Wow. But in the beginning, it was exciting. It was so exciting. I mean, because we thought we were going to change the world. Like, I mean, it was sold to us like we're going to you're going to build these shows. They're going to be brilliant. And then we're going to bring them to Australia and they're going to do big things for you. And then. When we were developing them, we were also doing uh, other pieces in class. Some of us didn't really get a part in the shows. <laughs> oh my god! So okay, it's just there's so much to digest. So so feel free to 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 stop us. But sh so at some point you're doing this acting company. You come up with what shows you're gonna do. Mm -hmm. They ended up not being plays that had been written. They were like weird poetic pieces <laughs> she had concocted. <laughs> and so there was two of them, and it we're gonna alternate, you know, shows. And so I will never forget this where she's she's announcing the casting. <laughs> and it's very stressful, the casting, because it's like, we're in this company. You hope you get a good part. This is our whole life. Yeah. And Are you so, guys working? Do you guys have jobs? No. no we, like no. especially like, the Australians, like we all had to like save up enough money to, to pay to be in the company. So you had I to have, have a big to pay you had to have I, a yeah. big nut to like pull from to like live off of you couldn't yeah. like work or even have a social life it sounds like yeah some people saved up i mean you come uh, from extreme wealth <laughs> uh no <laughs> i don't know i don't know about? did you save up before the company yeah i saved like 10 grand well i, I came with 10 grand much like a cult i always wonder how do these people survive absolutely, absolutely. Are, they can't work no. is it just savings or what um so she's she's announcing this casting and you just assume everyone's going to get a big part. And she goes, the, the shows were called I Wish You a Boat and Almost Home. And she goes, Chris, <laughs> <laughs> let me, I hope I get this right. She goes, she goes, Chris, first I thought I'm going to put you in just I Wish You a Boat. And I said, no, I'm going to put you in I Wish You a Boat and Almost Home. And I thought, no, I'm not going to put you in either. <laughs> what? And she like, she said this thinking process out loud. <laughs> And you just did she did she did she say that she gave you you were in both ultimately? I did nothing in those shows because what I actually ended up doing was learning how to use Cubase, which was the tech the, app, the tech too. app to do the cues for the show, because that's what I'm good at because I'm Asian. Uh, <laughs> I mean, did you feel that that was you the reason? said it? I thought it. <laughs> She was like, there was no Asians on this There's boat no from the 60s. Yeah. And then, like, you know, as, as you started to dissect things later on through the program, you were like, what is my function here? Why was I brought here? <laughs> that everyone kind of served exactly the purpose of what she wanted to build. And, you know, we, we did do the shows. But, yeah, my heart, my heart at that time was like, what? Now, when, when this happened, I mean, that's soul-crushing for that to occur. But is there a part of you of being like, I just have to work harder. I have to be better. This is the goal. I'm go Or were you like, there's something fucked well, up Well, first, I this. will say just for the sake, because, you know, booking TV doesn't mean anything. Chris is very talented. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the company, he, he, he very... I think for me, it was one of those things of there was a thought of maybe this acting company will be my family. Mm. And this is like the cult thinking where there's like, well, you do the tech guy this time. And then next time we do a show set in China. And you're the lead. <laughs> oh, my no, God. Because actually what was supposed to happen. The king and I. <laughs> 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 do you know what? When we were in Philadelphia, that was playing at like the Nutley Theater or whatever it was. I was like, fuck, I should have just gone there. And got <laughs> <laughs> an ensemble member. Um, no, because like what was supposed to happen was during class, what we had done was we were doing work on monologues of characters and one of my characters was a Chinese ballet dancer. Mm -hmm. And you take a piece of text from a, from a book or a, a biography and you make that into a performance piece. And the, the part that I had, um, that I was developing, she was like, you know what? When we go to Australia, I thought you're going to do that. You're going to do that as a monologue and people are just going to be like, oh. <laughs> And we never got to Australia. <laughs> that's wow. but that's it's so easy to it's so easy to prey on actors. And I, I don't think it's even like 
fully manipulative, but she, she that's she just thinks that she was a dreamer. I mean, we she thought these dreamer. shows, and like looking back at like now that like selling tickets is mm-hmm. especially this year, like selling tickets is this new like. Well, I got to figure this out. I right. have to literally figure out how to get strangers to buy tickets yeah. for me. You look back on this. She had no idea what she was doing in that department. Mm-hmm. To to be in Philly, she had been in Philly for years and would sell one ticket. Or some it shows really, we know. dress up. We would dress up for <laughs> Almost Home was about a hurricane. It was which about hurricane? Hurricane Car- Katrina. Was it about Katrina? Yeah. And, oh God. and we, so before, and we were like deep into the acting. So I would go outside. I'd cake myself in mud, dirt. We'd oh wait behind God, the church. I remember and that. then when no one was there <laughs> after 15 minutes, you'd say, all right, no show. And you'd like, you'd be covered in dirt and mud. I'd go like, okay, I'm going to go home now. Whew. And you kind of pray for those shows though. Cause we're like, this is shit. It, <laughs> like, so that, that's where, so, but the good times was she was an amazing teacher and we were like this level of an investment. We, so we did this uh, exercise autobiography where you read an autobiography and you, uh, became that character you did like mm-hmm. a deep character study like like daniel day lewis might do for mm-hmm. for a piece yeah so you were this was when I you were the ballet dancer this is when i <laughs> <laughs> this is when i was the ballet dancer so i basically walked with turnout the whole time like, <laughs> it was, like it was an incredible sacrifice he made. <laughs> so i was really into daniel day lewis at the time so i decided to do my left foot which do you know my left foot he won an Oscar for, an Oscar for it in 88, I believe, where he mm. plays someone with full cerebral palsy with only wow. access to his foot. And now this was okay because this was back in 2012. But I got a wheelchair off of Craigslist that looking back was far too small for me. Mm-hmm. And I would inhabit this character with cerebral palsy for about six hours a day. That's all I no. could take. And I mean, I showered. To go method. I went full method. Alone. Well, my girlfriend was there and you, she would push me in this wheelchair. She and like bathed you. I think she no. She bathed you because I remember. I took a shower and she like helped flip me over. (laughs) Wait, flip you over in the shower? Yeah, because I only had only could use my left foot. I was I was stuck. (laughs) I I was. And how would you let her know? Would you just be like, (laughs) or like what? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, pretty pretty much. I I could still talk. So Dan Lewis, you could still talk, but it was affected for sure. So what was your voice like? How would you speak? It was I I go. I'm not as brave as you. (laughs) No, this is w- what you just did. Yeah, it yeah. was it was like fully to the left, oh, and gosh. no, but it gets worse, Ian. It gets worse. So part of this exercise, part of her like you know being a real actor, and this is what Daniel Day Lewis did. Like in my defense, everyone was like into this back then. People were winning awards for this shit. So part of it was you have to take it in public. Are you really committed? Then you should be able to bring your character into public, into a public space, and inhabit it. So we all went to dinner. You as the ballet dancer. <laughs> uh, our friend Kaz was was she playing someone pregnant? She was. I think she was playing someone a from cult, a Mormon someone who cult. Someone escaped or, a Mormon cult, yeah, and she was pregnant, so she had a, a pregnancy belly. My girlfriend Leo was was uh, my girlfriend at the time. Leo was Audrey Hepburn. Yeah, and I. Olive, what was her adjustment? I don't remember her I being remember in just, Audrey Hepburn during this story. She just had to act like a cunt. Uh, <laughs> and I we went to a restaurant and she pushed me in the wheelchair. I pushed you in the wheelchair. You pushed me in the wheelchair because very strong. And uh uh she fed me the whole meal with full cerebral palsy. Do you know what the actual thing was when we were going to the restaurant is that I was pushing him in his wheelchair and it had clipped the curb or something and he fell a little bit and he went absolutely that shit crazy but in character while people were walking what, what am i gonna do public were walking past and reveal like, in public hey. that i that i I'm mean faking an you illness? guys should have taken it one step further and gone to disney world and then you would have gotten <laughs> on all the rides early so when we went to pay i was i was either paying i was paying for uh leah's meal she got out my wallet obviously because i can't get it out and this was at the time do you remember when credit cards had a picture of your face on them there was like yeah. a phase where some credit cards had a picture of face for identification. So I'd been eating the meal fully. Uh, con- my head was going to the left. Oh, my God. And on this credit card, there's a picture of me uh, smiling in a way that I, I don't think you could have captured if I had the conditions I was exhibiting. So Leah hands the card to the waiter. I'm like, just a, a nice little smile on the thing. And there I am fully with Ugh. this. And again, I feel 
I feel anxious telling the story now, but you got it. This is true. And this is nothing wrong and with it. When we did it in class, so we did these Meisner I'm exercises. Not, I'm not cringing at the offensiveness of it. I'm cringing at the idea <laughs> of <laughs> you inhabiting this for six hours a day in public and being like, I'm going to be an actor. <laughs> and, but this is literally said what we have to do it for Daniel Day Lewis does. I mean, I think that's what makes convincing performances. Of course. You have to inhabit this fucking whoever you're playing in whatever way works. For the final, the ends justifies the means. And when, so we would do these Meisner exercises, which we don't have to bore everyone with what they are, but we would then do Meisner exercises in as a, a character as the character mm -hmm. so i did it this was the proudest i was in that company was i did the miser exercise where my lover was leaving me and i was writing her a letter with my left foot between my toe and i was i was sobbing sobbing as i was oh writing this letter God. and that was a wendy who i one of the last teachers that her word was 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 the Gospel. word of god yeah and she she like stood up and and applauded and it was just like shut the fuck up chris she stood up i don't think she, she stood, stood up, up she stood up and she, she said she up. said she was like if you do that then you're going to make it like something the kind of thing that at that age like i was like that's everything wow and that was the peak of my acting career as far as i'm concerned <laughs> wow <laughs> what happened uh, all downhill from there. The company <laughs> collapsed. I went to New York. I had fucking nothing. <laughs> nothing. Dude, if you had kept up that facade, you'd be one of the best cerebral palsy actors of our time. You'd be the Rachel Dolezal of cerebral palsy actors. Well, it's, I think it's incredible looking back on, because it wasn't, I mean, 10 years ago, but just we've really changed. I think acting has was, hit a crossroads of like, the idea of giving people opportunities that deserve it. We're like, there was a time where Daniel Day Lewis won an Oscar because it was like, wow, he portrayed someone with a cerebral palsy. He but acted. Now, but now I think, and I don't think it's a, a false argument where it's like, well, why don't you give someone with cerebral palsy the opportunity to act as the lead in a movie? And producers would go, well, find me someone who has uh, the name brand value to get butts and seats. Or they'd mm. go, well, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes we need to we need to move them or it's it's exhausting days. But guess what? Daniel Day-Lewis, that's why he was so frustrating. If there was a wire, the, he, they had to pick him up. He refused to get up out of his chair and right. walk across it. At what point is that good acting versus being a complete asshole? I think it's it really is that matter of like how much are you – affecting other people. Like mm. when you hear the Jared Leto stuff, there's this weird thing now where, oh, there's this hilarious tweet I saw where, where people were saying, um, whoever's playing the Riddler in the new Batman movie, uh, what's his Paul name? Paul Dano. Paul Dano, where they were like, he was he couldn't sleep at night. Right. And someone retweeted like, oh, but he slept fine when he did 12 Years a Slave. <laughs> and it was just such a, it was, it was them getting caught in their own bullshit. I'm sure he right. slept fine. But like now people talk about this as like, they just use it for PR. And you hear like Jared Leto mailed a dead pig to his uh, a suicide squad oh castmates. God. And it's just like, That's well, that feels like shitty gift. you're doing it for them. Now, if you go fuck a dead pig on your own time, That's great. Fine. Good for you. I mean, I, I, look, I, I really hate the idea that like a X person should act as an X character in this movie. It's like, well, I think an XYZ person should act as X and whomever is the best XYZ for X gets it. Because I, f I feel like, the, is that not acting? I be think able I'm to finding it like quite difficult uh, at the moment. Like People are looking at Asians now. It's like, well, you can't play a Korean person because you're not Korean. Sure. You're Chinese. And I'm actually, well, I'm Australian, but I'm never going to play in Australia. Yeah. Or, or otherwise. So people are going so far to one way. It's going to bounce back, I think, eventually. But I, I think you're just limiting. Do you think so? I, I hope. Do. But because it's like a straight man can't play a gay character. And it's like... Well, yeah. What? I, ha I had a role... It was a just gay an guy can't, can't play a straight character, and then they're like, "Well, that's er erasure of the gay experience." It's like, what? Yeah. What are we doing? It's acting. It's, it's a, a whole fucking. Yeah. But it's just hard. But then it becomes it like like I had an audition and I ended up turning it down. I'm not saying I would have gotten it, but it was like a gay person. But he was like supposed to be hyper flamboyant. Mm. 
Mm. And I just had that feeling of like, I think, A, I'm flamboyant to begin with. B, I know how to lean into that. Mm -hmm. But there's this feeling of like, I'm going to play this gay guy and I'm going to be like, girl. And people are going to go like, what the fuck is this? And it's, it's. I think it's, fuck that. I think I, I, that only shows that you're a good look actor. Look at Aquafina. Look at Aquafina has been fucking. Oh, uh, she had to leave Twitter because people are telling oh, her to kill herself. How you because feel about Aquafina? People are insane. One sure. in four, like one in four adults, suffers from a severe form of mental illness. We're looking at the worst time to be alive ever yeah. in terms of mental health. And I don't know it, if that's a hundred percent true. You don't think that... I that think there were other times in history where mental health was really bad. They just didn't have names for mental yeah, health. People just they, didn't... People didn't have Instagram back in those days. Yeah, sure. And everyone is, can talk about their men mental illness. Yes, and Instagram. everyone's opinion has to be the loudest voice. That is contributing to mental health issues, just the tearing of the fabric of society. Everybody needs to shut the fuck up. We have too much wealth and too much austerity for anyone to just be anything. No, we need people to like not care about actors, not care about comics because they're too busy, you know, like grinding sure. their bones away in a fucking sawmill so they can put hap like, braces on their it's kids' an teeth. It's privilege. Like, you know. Yes. Mm. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, this would be a terrible uh, episode title. Illness of privilege. I'm so glad <laughs> I'm we agree I'm not clicking on, on that episode. <laughs> That, um, that's right, because, yeah. well, I mean, I could say have there been about him. <laughs> Whoa, do it! <laughs> well, talk we to once didn't talk for about two weeks because I left him at a sandwich shop in Philadelphia on our lunch break. We are Why? both, I would describe us both as uh, bitchy men. A lot. Oh. Really? I think we both, <laughs> I think lot. we both have, like, emotional characteristics that I associate with the word bitchy. Yeah, okay, I would say And I, would I say think that. we're both, like, silent treatment type. Yeah, and like, sorry, we, type. Yeah, we just did not talk to each other for, like, almost two weeks and until I think I made you laugh in class or something one time. That's, is that yeah, not, I don't remember that. Is that not a, a sign of good friendship where you can have fights, you can have some sort of falling out, I and then you get back together and, as, <laughs> as if nothing had happened? Yeah, I think it's unhealthy to do... Like silent <laughs> silence. Oh, is that what I it was? Remember, because like we, you we reaching were, out, we were to doing just everything together. Like and everything yeah. together. So we had lunch break. We went to a, a sandwich shop in Philadelphia I don't called this Pumpkin. Is so funny. And I got my sandwich first, and I was like, "I'm going to go back to class." And I walked back. He must not have heard me. I got back to class, and he he comes storming into the classroom. Chris. You left me. I was waiting for my sandwich. And then he didn't talk to me. For two Every weeks. day we're doing Meister oh, exercises. Wow. We're encouraged to lean into our rage. Lean into uh, your lot of emotions. Emotions. A lot yeah. of yelling in that class. Oh, I was in a wheelchair and you <laughs> left me in that sandwich. Yes, shop. You forgot to mention I was full through a ball. <laughs> I had to stay in it the whole time. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> you wanted to live that experience, man. Um, <laughs> that's it's, oh, you want to know? Oh, this is really. This is like embarrassing. So, I mean, this is how much of I was into acting. So there was there was one, uh, you're emotionally preparing. So you're going into a scene and something's happened intense before. So you have to go on the stairwell and imagine mm. something. Mm -hmm. And one was I had just been mugged or something. And I wanted to know, oh man, this is going to make me sick to say. I want oh, to know no. what is it like to be so scared you piss your pants. Oh no. I hadn't pissed, I pissed my pants once when I was like, you know, in, in like kindergarten. I remember oh. it. So <laughs> I went in the shower, fully dressed. And I was like, can I piss my pants? And it, it, I tried to like imagine being so scared and it was so hard. What were but you imagining that made you so scared that you could piss your pants? I was just imagining having to like watch you in a full length play. Oh, and, and, <laughs> and, and I ended up, okay. I ended up, I, I ended up. an acting career. <laughs> Whoa! Oh! There's other buttons here. <laughs> That's the music! God damn it! Um, Ian, stop. Sorry. <laughs> that one. That was a good one. Uh, so I do want to say, since we, I feel like we spoke, Wendy did pass away and it was emotional because I, I did. I told you, did I, I tell you this or did you reach out to me? I forget. There, there was like a Facebook group and oh, it, yeah. it was kind of strange because like a lot of people had just had a positive experience with her. So we watched this company, you know, the sales didn't work out. Australia wasn't quite happening. Mm -hmm. She started treating some people very poorly. She definitely treated like the men better than the women, which mm. I feel like is a habit with acting teachers. I've always had a theory, which is, I mean, this is, it is a sexist theory where I think 
there are more women that are great at acting and mm-hmm. so their abilities are devalued and men i find in acting class are praised for like even you know Mediocre tearing day. up slightly like there's just this like wow you mm. broke through the walls of masculinity yeah. to to barely have a tear and Perfect so i Joe think Marco, that was just a monday you, morning do you think that in acting you have to get you have to reach such wild depths of emotion and different things that you don't normally reach in everyday life that it almost reaches back to that tribal thing of like the female teachers drawn to the male because it's this like tribal woman want man devalue the woman because that's competition type thing it, could, it very well could be but this also i've heard this with male teachers too sanford meisner my my uncle actually worked with sanford meisner and he he was a gay guy mm-hmm. and apparently he was brutal to women and then he'd bring all the good-looking guys he had like some island he went to and he brought the good-looking guys to that island and i'm sure committed all sorts of crimes (laughs) 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 and i don't know if you know sandy meisner he's a famous uh, teacher but he had his vocal cords removed because he smoked so much and he uh if you watch the video the only real video of him that exists teaching long form he burps all his words that's how he spoke was he burped every, and it makes you, you pay have attention. Done that is an adjustment. That would be an, that would be incredible. Wow! To do how it. much but did he, he smoke? Go, I'm so yeah, nervous. He didn't go there. Like that's how he burped <laughs> really? it all, and he that's okay a, to do because it's. He didn't have a voice box. He didn't no, have they, one of those. Things. He had a tracheotomy, so like he. Uh, he couldn't. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, he, he didn't have one of those. He got cancer twice, I think. So he got his. He got his uh, vocal cords removed, and then he kept on smoking afterwards. And then I think he died. Yeah. Yeah. These are these old acting teachers who are just smoking. Don't give a shit. 100% of the time. I love In it. their sleep. That's me. I mean, um, would burn you bad acting. Wendy was a tremendously good acting teacher. I've never seen... I think about all the times in the arts where there's some people you see, and in, in comedy too, where you're like, they're not cut out for this. Mm. There's something deeply inside them that is not talented or some brain connection is not being made. Mm. And I saw her take a couple of people that I would have written off to the ends of the earth. And I don't know if she made them good actors, but she made them do good acting mm. in a moment. You disagree? I don't disagree. She definitely, like, you know, I always say that the best acting that I've ever seen was in that classroom. And the best acting I've ever done has been in that classroom. Um, but also to what lengths to get good acting out of someone kind of borderlines, is it good acting teaching or is it borderline abuse? And they're just paddling to get out of the situation. Yeah, mm. you can never tell because sometimes the class, you feel so much pressure to do well. Yeah. It, it does get your just adrenaline going and you're, I don't know. Yeah, but what is that balance? I think art is not a balance and it is inherently like deciding how unhealthy of a life do you want to live. Can you think about now, like though today, and think about how PC like the world is, and what you know, and having that classroom? For sure, I think I think acting teachers. Uh, I have I have a friend Jessica Fry who teaches at NYU. She teaches acting, and and I'm so interested to talk to her because I've heard of acting teachers getting fired. I I think acting has to be taught like roughly and. Uh, of course, there's always lines. I'm not saying you hit people. But Wendy was scary. Wendy yelled at us. Wendy screamed at us. The bar was incredibly high. And is it abusive or is it like well, I guess standards it's, it's, that, that it's, you have to reach if you want to be yeah. great at something? Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you you look at athletes and they I'm sure they struggle with it, too. They they, they There was that the Russian gymnast who like, did you see any of that? Like she, they found some drug, but they let her compete anyway. Oh yeah. And she fucked up the thing. Yeah. And her coach was like, she was sobbing on the side and her coach was being, you know, didn't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. I'm sure she was going to get hit or whatever. She goes, I mean, like, I don't think Tiger Woods was great because his father was nice. Yeah. <laughs> you True. know, or, or Michael Jackson or, yeah. or like you, you Serena hear these. And Venus Williams. I mean, it's a thing like I, it's like you have to almost make a decision. Do I want to feel safe emotionally or do I want to achieve greatness? And I think inherently in becoming great, there's a lot of um, things that have to hurt you along the way. 
you know, and whether that's not abusive, but like if you are in a scene and again, I'm not a classically trained actor like you guys. So this is just something I, I feel I may be way off because I don't have the complete experience with it. But I do feel that in a scene, if you have to reach a depth of emotion of like anger in the scene for it to come out the right way, if you're not there, it's almost like a spotter at the gym. You need someone to help elevate that bar a little bit higher and they don't do it by being like, Good work. Come on. I know you can do it. They're like, come on. Come on. Where the fuck you at? Come on. Give me one more. Yeah. Like you need someone to fucking almost drill sergeant. Yeah. Yell in your face to almost give you that visceral real reaction. Is that not? Of course. What it is. I think some people don't don't want that. I want it. I want That's it. What That's I what I want. I mean, like we knew what. So she then are like they not we cut out to act? Maybe they just need a different teacher, but that's why you have different schools. And I do think, like, you can go too far. I think both of us benefited from being – I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I benefited from being a guy. She, she when, I, when I did well, she really sang my praises, made <laughs> me feel good. And so, so I at least got enough of that. But at these – you know, sometimes you hear from the victors in a way. We're like, you know, mm-hmm. we, we could bring on the person who quit acting because... Yeah, because of that, she, yeah. Right. She was vicious. What about a, a female student? Did they have a different experience? <laughs> well, what you so our friend Kaz, uh, and your good friend Kaz, she, she's an incredible she's actor. She's an amazing actress. Incredible yeah. actor. And like, I think, um, like, after the whole, the whole debacle in Philadelphia, like, we all kind of had to go away and lick our wounds and, like, process what mm-hmm. happened there because it was like a really toxic environment it wasn't good but like we did some great acting so it was trying to figure out how we can cherry pick mm. out the good stuff away from it and some people couldn't do that mm-hmm. and i think that's when yeah some people tapped out of it all together right um and she just she- got meaner so as as the company kind of fell apart it just like it she would just be madder and madder, mm. and if you were late, she'd just scream at you. I never scream. like. I mean, yeah, there was a point like where one of our cast members ended up leaving the the program altogether in the middle of the run. We, we were getting dressed for that matinee. I think we had an audience of three that day, so you know stakes were high. <laughs> <It> was- <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, what happened? Sophie like- walked in, and I, I, oh god, she said something, and when he was like. Okay, then you're fired. And we all just stood. And it was also a lesson in like looking back I'm like we just we all just stood there and let it happen. Right. Well, we did. Yeah, I mean like because we also we were in a foreign country. Yeah. We didn't have any exactly. Other people. We were right. in a foreign country. Yeah. yeah. So well, John Martin was excuse. in a foreign body. <laughs> <laughs> what he I mean was what in is wheelchair? We yeah. didn't know what was going <laughs> on. <laughs> 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 John Marco tried to stand up, but he was in a wheelchair. So it's like, it was you it. know what? My other character, we did the exercise twice. I did it twice. I did Eminem for the other one. Amazing. And I walked around, <laughs> old up. Eminem, and I walked around in a big do rag and a long white tee that oh went down my to my God. knees. And I, I took that one in public a lot. That Dude. was my favorite. Because you can do the rag. And I did. <laughs> the rag. Guess what I did for the exercise? You what? know Eminem a little? Yeah. Uh, uh, who's, who's his friend who died? Um, proof. Oh, yes. I did uh, Eminem doing Proof's eulogy. Wow. And I did a rap at the eulogy, like crying. This is more offensive than the wheelchair cerebral palsy. That is way more offensive. It it was special. Do you think... See? Greatest acting. The... The, You guys said that the best acting you've ever done was in this class. Do you think that what you learned and everything in the class has inspired you in acting later or was it all for not? Like, have you used that later? Did it, was it a building block to make you better? Or was well, you it just a like active acting career? So you take that first and then I'll, I think it like with any, like going back to it being like kind of culty, the thing about cult leaders is that they, they put their kind of message into your brain. And it was always like with when I'm auditioning or when I'm on stage now, I can hear her. Mm. like giving me notes, which mm-hmm. is incredible because they're always really valid notes, but mm-hmm. just knowing that, you know, that's not good enough or you have to pick that up or just to work as hard as you possibly can and see the bullshit. So I think that's like been instilled in me mm-hmm. so deeply. Sometimes, you know, not for the, cause it, 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 for me, sometimes I can't deviate away from that cause it feels too foreign, but I don't know. I think it's definitely helped me. It's, I mean, it's very, it's very challenging because you do these acting classes where, you know, you like, for example, if you're doing an emotional scene and you're not quite at this emotion, you can't fake it. You got to be, you just got to be where you are. Mm -hmm. Then you get to a film set 
and cameras are going. Yeah. And you got to you got to do something. So like you the reality smacks you in the fucking face and you're like, "Well, I got to like I'm not feeling rage right now, but they they said they wanted angrier and I got to just do it." And and like all this stuff kind of takes you away from the, the, your core, your mm-hmm. core art. And you just always have to revisit it and like fight. I mean, you've been doing more on camera stuff than I have in a long time. For me, I feel like it set a bar very high of what I consider acting to be. Mm-hmm. And once I got into stand up, I really, you know, I used to take classes every, every week and I would do scene study and I just do stand up now. Mm-hmm. I consider, I never thought there would come a day where I would, acting would be the tertiary thing i'm mm-hmm. a comedian and in a lot of ways i sometimes feel like oh i am not even capable of acting anymore like to what mm. i consider acting to be it, it's almost this impossibly high bar why because mm-hmm. you think you'd, you'd phone it in no not phone it in but like it's just like like emotional preparation which we used to do before a scene to, to get us there like like even making my brain work that way yeah. It's it feels foreign to me. Well, it's like she always used to say, "It's a muscle. If it's you don't use it all the time, absolutely. then right, I absolutely. Mean, then look at you, you're a god, uh, exactly." <laughs> and I'm just doing on camera audition, you know, these things, and that doesn't feel like acting to me, right? And like if we if we had ever had to do like a scene together, you know, if I was like had a one liner and we next did a lead scene together, in, do you remember? Yeah, but in I'm saying Hebrew. like now I'd be terrified. Yeah, we'll give it, yeah. <laughs> that was the least offensive thing I did, pretending to know Hebrew, and. If we did a scene now, I would be pretty mortified. I would worry my abilities would be so... And I don't love it Mm. in the same way. I love Mm stand-up. I'm in love with stand-up. Do you go through phases of loving stand-up, though? Yeah. Yeah, but it's still like... It really, like, something about... What I I think about stand-up, and it's it's not just the stand-up, it's the nature of... I put something out, I get the approval, I move on. There's something about the feedback loop of stand-up mm. that appeals to the way my ADD, OCD, mm. whatever brain works. That, like, I love it and I'm obsessed with it. Mm-hmm. And even, I could, the, the kind of shit I do, I did five shows last night, seven on Saturday. M- you know, my feet hurt, I'm tired, mm-hmm. and I'm addicted to it, Yeah, you know? And so, I don't know. I just don't know if I could act again in the way that I value or i would have to like go and sit down with myself see him next week like in a wheelchair going down i know (laughs) is stand-up not an act i mean like when you are having the shittiest day ever you just got news that a friend of yours died and you have to go on stage in five minutes are you not acting to a certain degree but like it's it's in the realm of things that i am most best at or or Mm -hmm. that like like, I was always obsessed with crying. I think, like, a lot of, especially guys, because I don't cry as much in my real life. So, like, there was this idea of, like, I, I got to be able to cry on mm. stage. And there was a time I used to make myself cry, like, once a day. <laughs> and, like, I feel just <laughs> I different. I remember we were on a bus to New York and you just started crying. Why? Like, yeah, yeah. Sometimes people would give me free shit. They see me crying <laughs> wow. in a coffee shop and they'd be like, sorry, whatever's going I on. I think your best acting is that you act like you're emotionally well. <laughs> <laughs> But I, like, I, have, I have a question please. about acting, if you don't mind. How do you, how do you make a line yours but stick to the idea of what they want? Like, how do you make someone else's dialogue and life natural? Like, I, I, I have such a hard time reading lines sure. and being the thing that they want when I only really know how to be myself. Like, how do you? But that's actually what they want. That's that's. But you're talking I mean, about the literal gen- words sometimes, like the words yeah. are. I mean, I think it's like part of it's. You just have to make it comfortable in your mouth. Like you do Shakespeare, and it's like if you do Shakespeare, and what's a Shakespearean insult? Well, I mean, you just have to believe what you're saying. Mm. Like that's the only thing. And then, I've I've been given notes before where, oh, can you just do it a little bit more this way and done it exactly the same way, and then come up and go that that that's yeah. The one. It's like, Oh, okay. There's a degree of just ignore it. <laughs> yeah, basically. Just like with co- just like with stand up. It's like yeah. when someone told me I was to one man show and it's uh-huh. like, okay. Yeah. What 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 am I gonna do? Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Take it down a notch, never. Yeah. <laughs> um but uh so so yeah, that was Wendy Ward, rest in peace. R. I. P. She if I ever act again, it was like it was I mean, I think like we both owe a lot to her. Mm-hmm. Because you know of where your career is and where mine is, sure, some further than others. Uh, <laughs> <Ooh-wee>! <laughs> no, um, I'm just joking. 
What do you think? Do 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 you look at me not acting? Because there was oh, a time when we were both like you know we were both in it. You were brothers in arms. Brothers in arms. Do you see <laughs> it? Do you see thieves. it as a as a giving up, or do you see it as a? I don't oh. think you've given up at all. My when I told my wife that I was coming to see, she said like, the guy that acted with J Lo. She's a big J Lo fan. I'm like, yeah, him. You know, so yeah. you know, great, great, great. And like more comedians now than ever are like doing incredible like incredible series and writing mm-hmm. their own stuff. Your sure. your opportunities to develop and and be in like work that's far reaching is far more than mine. Well, I think frankly, the bottom line is I'm going to get further in acting as a stand up comedian than I think I would have if I just pursued. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, some people ask, them, how did the acting go? And I'm like, if it was going great, I wouldn't have pivoted to stand up comedy mm-hmm. at 27. Like, there was a reason why I was like, we got to explore but you were something else. It was really funny, like in class. And you were always writing sketches. Remember, we had to do that, uh, that uh, Indiegogo campaign. Mm. For the for our company to get money to get all our families to give us money to put these shows on, Jeez, <laughs> no, one came, right. no one came to. God, everything in life is a <laughs> fucking Ponzi scheme. And uh, and you wrote this incredible like sketch, but it was like an office esque sketch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we never made it. it was Wendy, Wendy was funny. not particularly adept at, at no. comedy. Oh god, I remember once. Oh, this is a tough story to tell because I I can't I will not say uh, the f word on on this podcast, but it was part of. This, so we were doing repetition exercises mm-hmm. uh, where – how would you explain a repetition exercise? So were we're you doing say a the scene. same word when you talk about yourself? <laughs> <laughs> if we're doing a scene and, and he says some line you like, just, like you you're, were, you're mad at me, I'd be like, I'm mad at you. You're mad at me. I'm mad at you. And you like use that to like kind of right. listen and react. Like you and, say the same thing, the same words, but you're saying them a different – delivery to say something else every time yeah and you could change the wording to like if if we get mad or go like yeah you're really fucking pissed at me i'm really fucking pissed at you you're really fuck and you go back and right. forth until yeah. everyone's like up here and you're talking like this and that's I kind really of love that. one of the critiques of meisner is that it does result in just a lot of like well fuck you fuck you fuck you god and, i love uh, that i know i mean that's why I david Mamet, meisner. my dad was such a curse all i wanted uh, i realized part of acting for me is just i want to go on stage and be like go fuck it's just like getting yeah. out the anger at something but we did this scene. It was from The Odd Couple, which is by Neil Simon. It's a very, in, you know, The Odd Couple. You've yeah. heard of the, it's super innocent, no cursing at all. Mm-hmm. And I was doing it with some guy who had one line on Gossip Girl and he was 17 and that was his credit for 30 years. And we were going back and forth and he was like, he's like, you're angry at me. I was like, yeah, I'm angry at you. And he was like, uh, he he was like, pay attention to me. I was like, I'm paying attention to you. He said, look at me, you fucking F word. Uh-huh. And I started laughing because it was so, so out of, the world of Neil Simon <laughs> and and Wendy and this was the kind of teach you what she said stop no you're not in the scene because if you were in the scene and someone called you that you would be pissed at them <laughs> and and I think she was being silly but she was also right in the sense of like yeah I right. I ha- was having a comedian brain thing yeah because I was saying like that's insane to say in right. a Neil Simon play <laughs> and she was like no be in it and I that's think so that's interesting. part of comedian versus actor. And this is where I wonder if my brain can ever go back here is a comedian does step outside and goes, look at that. Look at that. Were you being a comedian or were you being a person that just call, got called? <laughs> uh, hmm, and you're like, this is fucking insane. Um, that's so interesting, though, that she sided with him and chastised you because the acting in the hierarchy of things was at the top, the be all end all over the feelings or the words or yeah. anything. That's so interesting. Cause your true emotion was to laugh. It's true. I mean, but then I should have laughed that. and then brought it into this. I should have laughed like at him <laughs> in the yeah. scene. Like, oh, oh, I'm a I'm a yeah. You're a ha. <laughs> she, she definitely. And if I didn't say it back, if I had said like, Oh, I'm an F word. She'd be like, that's not that. what he said. Right. And I'd be like, Wendy, but she it just, just heightens it until you guys are sucking each other's dicks, <laughs> basically. <laughs> um, and I do think the last thing I want to touch on with her was it was a thing where we we had fallen out. I mean, it, it was an ugly end. Mm. I didn't, like, write her a fuck you letter, but it was very clear that we were done. Mm-hmm. Our, our our paths had, had closed. And when someone is dying, you know, like, so there were all these actors, and we were, like, doing a group, and they were like, let's make a video of us all being like, we love you. And I was mm-hmm. like... That does not feel authentic to yeah. my experience or to her seeing it. But one of those things, sometimes people are dying and like party wants to like say something to them. But in a way you're like, well, 
is that just for me? Mm. And am I like burdening them with like my send off message when they don't, I'm not even, they might not even think about me from this moment until the mm-hmm. time that they are, are in the ground. And it, it was, uh, it was tough because there was like a love and a feeling really I never, close to her. yeah, I think cause Leah and I, uh, yeah, we yeah. got there like a couple months before all the Australians came. So we kind of like figured out, you know, we figured out the space we were going to perform in and, and the disastrous marketing campaign. And, but we like, <laughs> you know, we went to her apartment plenty of times and we, we had dinner and, um, I know I wrote her an email and it was tough. I, I you wrote, I you did write her an email. I did write her an email and it was just like two stories, including that one I just told about, about the F word. And then I think it was, it was also the, it wasn't really stories with her because none of my stories with her were particularly pleasant, but it was like, it, I tried to frame it in like you taught me like how, mm-hmm. what, what quality is and what, what it means to like actually care about the work you're doing. And and I, of course, I didn't hear back. I don't know if she read it or anything, but I sent it. It felt weird because also it'd be like, "Hey, I heard you're headed out soon, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, here's two stories." Did you write her anything? I did write her something. Yeah, yeah. She did not get back to me, but I, I, I do know that she read everything. She was really she her her health deteriorated quite quickly, and uh, she made one video. She made one video. Did you see the video? Oh yeah, yeah. And it was very emotional. It's like you know because I hadn't sp- spoken to her since since our Philadelphia experience. And uh, I don't know, there's been many times over the years that I've wanted to reach out and be like, you know, you were the most influential person in my acting career mm. that, and, and I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now if it wasn't for you. Mm-hmm. And, I'd, uh, you know, it was important for me to let her know that uh, before she left. Mm-hmm. So, but she didn't, she didn't reply back, but I know that she read everything. I from who? Someone told you that? Yeah. I have people. Yeah, she wrote, she was very like, you know, she, she, she made a video and, and she was like in a, a, a nice home that I think she had like rented for like her last month. I mean, really, it's the kind of stuff that makes it hard it to sleep hard at to night. Watch. It was hard to watch. Yeah. And, and she was just like, she, she was very spiritual or at peace or she was very much like, this is life. Like she, she had that, you know, she had this side that was scary and kind of angry and irrational and felt very upsetting. And then she also had a sign where she was like, I'm a human being. I know death. I know the world. I know the life Did we she have. have a family? Uh, she had a her, sister. A sister, mm-hmm. yeah. Her father had like passed away, like I think in his 60s. And that was like a big part of. Yeah. She I had think, a sister, yeah. I think you guys both did the right thing. Reaching, I think it is never wrong or a bad move to reach out to someone and let them know that they have impacted your life in a positive way no matter if you are on speaking terms or not i i think letting someone know how you feel with love and kindness that they have left an imprint on your life is never a bad idea because you don't know even if they don't respond it's still giving them the gift of closure in a way you know for you Mm -hmm. as well and i think like if you didn't hear from someone for years and someone was like hey you know you really impacted me and i just need to let you know how good would you feel yeah you'd feel great irregardless of the falling out you had or whatever that would be such a nice bow on the gift of your experiences together well good we did it That's the kind of music you're into, right? That kind of stuff? No. Where do you program these things from? Well, th- th- this is pre-programmed. I got a new box, and I, I have Yeah, how do you get the these cues. sounds on here? You download them? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Th- th- these came on the box, though. Mm. That's not like my song. That's not like... Oh, I love that. I mean, that's a fun song. That feels very pokemon Like that kind of like... I don't know what kind of rock you I love it. It's like coming back to a daytime talk show. <laughs> Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. Coming up next. Could you, you could know. you be that guy? Oh, yeah. Welcome back to The Downside. Today, we're talking to John Marco and what it was like to play a guy in a wheelchair for nine <laughs> months of his life. Is it right? Is it wrong? When we get back, sponsored by... All state. <laughs> um, so, so to, so to wrap it up... Uh, uh, you're in London now. Yeah. You're acting. Yeah. You filmed uh, Shy Horses, Shy Horse Play. 
Nope. Shy Pony <laughs> play. Some my little slow horses. My Asian pony. Uh, <laughs> can't get away with that now, man. <laughs> Woo! Uh-uh. Uh, where did my you film sweet that? sweet samurai. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was the end. Um, <laughs> oh my god. Um, I filmed it in London. It's a it's a Apple series, um, and it is set in MI5, and it has Kristen Scott Thomas, uh, Olivia Cook, and. Gary Oldman. Now, is one of the downsides to an Apple series is knowing no one's ever going to watch it. <laughs> Damn, can someone turn on a light? Because there's a lot of shade in here. The thing about being in a series is that you have one for no one to watch. Uh, uh, I, I, I could tell people. Touché. I could tell people. Oh, I, I have three comedy specials on Peacock, and no one would ever be able to prove me. Do wrong. you? <laughs> I do. Three specials is on that, Peacock. Nah. Oh, um, really? No. Shut it. the fuck up. Oh. I can't. You're too good an actor. I can't tell if you're lying or acting. There well, you go. Try uh, not to play poker with me. I'll take all your money. <laughs> <laughs> Would you ever come to America, uh, or only I'm if you had a America. job? <laughs> but I mean, like, I mean, like, you know, is London going to be your home base? No, oh, I'd love, I'd love to work out here. I think the. But you would only come here for work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you, wouldn't com- you wouldn't commute. <laughs> come on, guys, <laughs> folks. Do they call? Is there a ter- we have bi coastal for New York and LA? Like, is there a term for people who are always in London or always in LA? Or yeah, I think it's called go pretentious. To, let's go to London. Or <laughs> it's called rich as fuck. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Not Russian. Are you going to call? It's called consistent work. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I would come here for work. Absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't. I'm not like. I think when I was younger. I, w- I really wanted to pick up and move to LA and like you know do the whole actor thing, but knowing mm. knowing what I know now, absolutely not. Do you like do you like London? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do very much so. I think you get invited to all of uh, Boris Johnson's parties all the time. Mm. I was at that one. You were at that one. I was. Have you heard about all the Boris Johnson stuff? What is this? So so Boris Johnson, oh, uh, prime, prime minister of of uh, uh, London. Of, of England, UK. of the whole UK, well, we but he lives in London. <laughs> but he lives in London. Yes. He lives in London, yeah. and he was always compared to Trump. He's like a mess. His hair is always yeah, messy. yeah. yeah like, I know about that. Well, yeah. he like the thing that really pissed people off was revealing that during COVID he was he was having, having parties, parties. Yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, like the Gavin like Newsom of fucking yeah, Britain. yeah, yeah. But but Bryn, like, I mean, you their parliament stuff, their meetings, they really call him out. They go, they go like, oh, he says he didn't know it was a party. He wasn't sure it was a oh, party. Oh, that's great. Like they, they really, they really uh, uh, roast him. Am I wrong with Parliament? Don't make fun of my, gov- my government skills. N- no, it was your accent. Oh. <laughs> uh, wow. Yes. Uh, uh, he didn't know what a party was. Oh, much better. Wow. When my mom took me when? to London in high school, this, is, uh, this, this was when I was an actor. I was like. I'm going to speak in a London accent the whole trip. <laughs> oh, my God. And I am sure that my accent was like this the whole time. And I was like, Mom, do you think I'm drinking Mom. everywhere? And I poor mom was like, yes. You had watched My great. Fair Lady like once. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's great. Um, but uh, uh, well, it's, it was very good to see you. Thank you very much. I hope, I hope you're in America more or that I tour in London. Have you ever done stand-up in London? No, I was supposed to when I... Canceled my London leg. I did a European tour and I canceled my London leg because I had to record uh, an album. And so I couldn't switch a date. So I canceled that and I had rescheduled for 2020 with all the hope that year had. And uh, well, we're haven't, back, baby. I haven't rescheduled. I still, have a, I, still have a, I still have a card, a birthday card from Atel in my room that says, Happy birthday, Ian. 2020 is going to be your year. That's <laughs> so <laughs> fucking funny. Yeah, it's great. Um, well, uh, uh, let's, uh, let's, is there anything you want to plug for our listeners? Well, you can watch my series on Apple if you so choose. First of April. What is it? April? First of April. How many episodes? There's going to be 12. Are you in the mall? Yes, I am. Whoa, wow. that's awesome! What's Congrats, your character, man? His name's Roddy Ho. Roddy Ho, okay. Mm. Um, is he Asian too? It's and <laughs> would do, did you feel you feel was it was it tough acting? Any like tough scenes, or was it like what is he? What's his job? What does he do? I can't, I'm not allowed to say this. You really you signed things? Yeah, I've signed things. Sure, Apple's intense, I'm sure. Yeah. Would, mm. would Wendy be We've proud? I've got a fucking phone in here that's Apple made and they can hear me. That's now. true. That's true. Yeah. Um, all right, so check it out. What's what's the title one more time? Slow Horses. Slow Horses. Mm. First of April. Is it slow like horses that like don't you know they don't quite pick up on things as fast? Wow. If I, I ask John Marco if he's gonna watch it, he'll say, Nay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, no. <laughs> uh, Ian, anything you want to plug? It's going to uh, come out in, in like a month. Yeah. Oh, hey. Um, at Vermont Comedy Club, headline in April 1st and 2nd. Going to be a lot of fun. I looked for the ticket link today and I couldn't find it. Well, that's an interesting thing because uh, that's not true. They fixed this a month ago. <laughs> uh, I have a great podcast, Sopranos Prima Volta. Uh, I've never seen Sopranos. Sam Roberts has seen it nine or ten times, so I'm watching it for the first time. It's a watch-along podcast. Check it out, youtube.com slash not Sam. And uh, bye, guys. Every Thursday, Gas Digital Network, 11 a.m. And uh, iAnimal69, Instagram, Twitch, and Twitter. Fantastic. This was great. You Thank you. so much stuff. I'm so uh, impressed. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes. Yeah, but that's what comedians do. We have a lot of stuff. But if we were to see all the eyeballs on it, it'd be three. <laughs> kind of like I wish you a boat. <laughs> kind of like I wish you a boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think you're just speaking from your personal experience <laughs> with this podcast. But, uh. <laughs> and if you like me, find me online at your Marcus Arezzi. I am I am touring around the country. I just put out the poster today. I am going to be in Dallas, Houston, uh, D.C., uh, Connecticut a billion fucking times, um, Detroit, L.A., um, uh, uh, Virginia, just check it out at your Marco Cerezi. And I also have a new text, uh, sign up thing where you can sign up and you get a text, uh, just when I'm performing in your city. So like once a year, it's an easy, easy way to, to stay in the loop. Can I also say real quick, sorry, yeah. I'm filming a special, uh, in August in New York city and, uh, I'm going to be in Austin, Chicago, San Diego, and, uh, putting more dates together. So I just want to plug that. Where were you filming quick. the special? In New York. You haven't decided the venue yet? No, it's between three right now. Sure, sure. But, uh, yeah. That's very that's exciting. exciting. Yeah. That's very exciting. See it on Peacock if you have it. Yes, Apple TV for the two subscribers <laughs> to Apple TV. Subscribers. Is it? I'm going to get fired. Shut up. Wow. <laughs> um, uh, thank you, Chris. Ian, thank you for filling thank in you. for my calls. Really it fun. was delightful. Yeah, you're, it was you're a such good a joy. Time. And uh, uh, just uh, remember... Um, uh, that, like our acting teacher, we're all going to die. <laughs> this is the downside. One, two, three. Downside.